All right. Welcome, everybody. How are you guys doing? I'm so excited about this uh, art play class two. Uh, you know, the, the first one was so fun. And uh, I hope you guys got to see it. And the cool thing is you guys can rewatch the videos over and over and over and, uh, and go at your own pace. And today, today is going to be uh, pretty, pretty cool because it's. I feel like it's such an important, uh, it's one of the most essential things that I feel like when it comes to, to drawing and sketching or just urban sketching, if you're into urban sketching, if you're into design, if you're into painting, it's such an integral part of drawing uh, and designing, really. And that's line work, you know? And so today we're gonna be learning the essentials. Uh, I mean, we, we can't do too much in, in one session. There's a lot to learn, but I'm, I'm gonna try to give you folks as much as I can uh, without going overboard and make you feel overwhelmed. But the cool thing is, remember, you can rewatch the class over and over and over and take your time. Don't feel like you have to keep pace with uh, the speed or the uh, efficiency that I'm drawing. You can always take your time and remember that your speed is the correct speed. So if you want to if you want to go a little bit slower, that's OK. So we're going to be utilizing line work uh, and sketch for sketching and drawing and how essential that is uh, to to show efficiency, to show scale, to show proportion. Uh, we're going to be learning characteristics of lines, such as weight, marks, intensity, and different tools. And that's something I can't wait to get into. We were talking a little bit about that for the class. Uh, you know, to show various types of line, really, uh, with uh, different different materials. So let's get right into it, because I can't wait to draw. Let's get right into my desktop here. All right. And... Can you guys see the desktop? Okay, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. So here, here, let me make sure that this is. There we go. All right. Um, so I wanna show you just a few tools that I'm using. Um, and and it, if you don't have all of these tools, that's totally okay. You're actually fine with whatever you're comfortable drawing with today. And here's the funny thing is, I'll save it for last because you kind of see it up to the side here. <laughs> I brought some of my favorite uh, pens and, and materials or uh, tools to draw with. I brought some dip pens, right? And these are really great with to go with any kind of dip uh, pen ink that you have, uh, preferably watercolor. If not, that's okay. Uh, if you're not going to use watercolor with them, that's then that's uh, that's fine. But I like to use waterproof uh, or water uh, waterproof ink. I do have one that's not waterproof and that's okay because we're not going to be doing watercolors today. Um, and then if you look at the, the nibs of this, you'll see that it's slightly different, right? You have kind of a round tip here and kind of a cartooning nib, if you will. And then you have one that's sharp and this is better for detail. That's what I like about these two options. And then I have just a normal brush pen, really, just if I want to use any kind of brush work, that's always handy. Uh, sometimes you want to find one with a longer tip and that'll give you some different uh, some different variation in line, more elegant line. And then I have my awesome bamboo or reed pen, however you want to call it. This is really a great uh, tool to draw with. My only the only thing about this tool is that it, it's really pretty heavy. It's a pretty heavy line unless you tip it vertically, then you get a little bit thinner line. So you do get some line variation with this with this reed pen, but it can be pretty heavy handed uh, and also doesn't carry as much ink as, I, as I'd like. And here's what I couldn't wait to show you guys. So believe it or not, these are really great to draw with. These I just found, I found on the street. This is just a twig that I sharpened the tip of, right? And this is just a stick. It started off this way at the end and I just shaved it down. And these two work great for drawing. Now they don't hold much ink obviously, uh, but it's just, you know, you get some really interesting, uh, very characteristic uh, lines that uh, have a lot of personality in them. So, uh, and the other cool thing is you can kind of shave it down into different shapes and different uh, different angles. So you can get uh, different types of line, a variety of types of line, if you will. So let's get, let's go ahead and experiment with all of these and see what happens. And I kind of want to show you uh, the difference really between the different, the different tools. All right, so let's start with, I'm just going to start with one of my dip pens. 
all right, just to get loose. And this is really just, you know, you want to warm up anytime you're going to draw, whether it's going to be, uh, you know, for a sketch or for a, a very formal sketch or drawing, or you're just out, out, out and about and you're, you're doing some creative uh, sketching and urban sketching, or whatever it is, you want to warm up and get loose. You know, you get into this kind of flow state and, uh, you know, you get into kind of a rhythm. Um, and most importantly, you, you learn a little bit about the tool that you're using, and that's really important, the characteristics of it. So you get used to it. All right, so let's start with the first um, reference that we have. So that's the still life with the vases. That's a uh, nice reference, right? I tried to pick one that had a lot of uh, potential to show um, kind of dimensionality and, and spatial qualities in the, in the drawing. So uh, I think this one's perfect, actually. It's got a lot of different shapes that we can that we can draw. So let's start at the top. I think it's a good idea to start at the top, right? Because we're going to work our way down and work our way towards uh, that that the foreground coming at us, right? And whenever I'm drawing, especially with line work, I always consider the composition. That's really, really important. But for now, let's just get nice and loose and warmed up. I'm just going to start with the top of the vase, right? And just let your hand relax, almost like you're just writing your signature and just follow the contour line, right? Just follow that contour line. And even if you go over where those leaves are, that's totally okay, right? That's totally fine. And just nice and easy, just this pace right here that, that you see me going, right? Not bad, right? That's pretty, pretty, pretty simple. And it's okay if, if some of the things go over into the foreground or behind, because right now we're just practicing seeing the objects and being able to describe them with line. And hey, Jed, I have a question. Sure. I, with, the, with the leaves and everything laying over the top of a yellow vase, for example, mm -hmm. the white flowers over the terracotta pot, I'm just curious why you didn't go with the lower left hand vase that's on that's down there in the corner. That's a good that's a good question, Sharon. I uh, I tend to draw the larger shapes first. So in okay. other words, I look for the the largest geometric shapes that I see and if there's five or six separate objects, for example, in this case you have about six different vases, I look at the largest forms that I see that are groups that are grouped together. So largest grouping of objects. And okay. that's the upper left hand corner. Okay. And if, if you pretend that those aren't vases, you just make them out to be just shapes, right? You have kind of a triangular object. You have a triangular geometric shape that is formed by those vases, the four vases that are clumped, clumped together, kind of an equal quadrant, really. Uh, the two circular vases off to the left of this face, and then the two that are perpendicular to each other. They create almost a triangle or a diamond shape. Okay. So I always look for the largest geometric shape first, and that to me uh, is really going to simplify this composition. Okay, okay. thank you. Great, yeah. yeah, that's a great question, actually. So, um, so you know, if I'm looking at uh, some architecture or I'm drawing lots of people, for example, that's always a good Practice, always good practice to do that. So in this case, I'm not going to try to draw a perfect contour drawing. I just want you to just begin to see the different objects together and how they sit in space. So let's go ahead and just start with the round, nice round shape in the background of this face and just draw with a nice easy line, just the shape of it. And any line you see, for example, some of the that line that cuts it in half, and it might be the opening of the top of the vase, like that, right? And keep your hand nice and relaxed. It doesn't have to be tight because you know, you know, it's okay that it's not going to be, you know, that perfect, as long as, you know, you're having uh, a nice and relaxed line that you're applying, and uh, you're seeing all the composition pretty well. And if you want to make adjustments, for example, if you want this vase to be a little bit more round, it's okay to 
to add a little bit more to it, right? Just like that, no big deal. And let's go ahead and add, just so I can show, uh, show you guys that shape that I was talking about that's really important, right? So I'm gonna draw the other vase that is right beneath it. It's almost touching really, right? And it just goes right over. And it's okay if it's slightly larger or slightly smaller, you know, it's it's okay. And, and just, you know, I want you to start getting comfortable uh, with, you know, the, the drawing or the subject matter not being exactly the way you see it uh, and just being comfortable with that. And that's pretty good. You guys, you start to see that shape that I'm seeing now with the largest grouping of, of objects there in the background. And then now I'm just going to include the blue vase behind it that is going over kind of at an angle. And then it goes around. Now, here's the interesting thing. Normally, we draw the contour edge, right? Like the, basically going around all the objects. In this case, I'm just going to draw the rest of it the way I see it, because we know that from the underside of it, how the rest of it is going to look. So it's a pretty good guess how that's that side of it that is covered. Uh, it's pretty easy for us to guess how that's going to look. Right. So far, so good. And you can see with this particular nib, how the line is nice and bold and thick and smooth. Uh, there isn't much variation with it, but that's okay. I love how bold that line is. I can turn it on the side because it has a, a kind of a cartooning nib, which is circular and then it's angled up. Right. So now let's draw the other vase that is to the right of it, right? And this is a nice, very graphic line that we're using. So I'm going to treat it almost like a poster because it looks very graphic and very designed. So let's start with the top of the vase. If you're not sure, you can work where it's going to fall in. You can work on the left side of it. So that way it's easier for you to judge where it's going to fall in your composition. For example, draw the outside of it first and draw the bottom, and just like that. So now we know where that falls and we're not guessing so much. And I'm just slowing it way down so you guys can really just have a nice, easy pace, right? And if, if the line is just slightly off, you wanna, you wanna make an adjustment, that's totally okay as long as you're seeing the composition properly. And I'm just drawing some of the major, major shapes so far. That's really the most important thing, right? And let's draw the base of it, which is this nice kind of circle that wraps around and gives it some, some shape like that, right? Okay, now I'm gonna try something with this pen. I love how this looks, very simple, very elegant looking. I'm gonna to try to turn it on its side. And that's the other thing you can try with your tools is try to turn it left or right, trying to turn it upside down, see what kind of different lines you create. I'm gonna try that with this flower that is laying diagonally across the top of this blue vase, right? So let's see if anything happens. There you go, see, look at the difference in line, right? Let me let me uh, zoom this down. Let me move the camera a little bit closer. There we go. And I'm just turning it to the side of the pe the pen, and that's giving me a kind of sharper, more abrasive line. That's pretty interesting. And look at the difference between that line and the bolder contour line that we had for the vases. And I'm just following along. I'm just, you know, occasionally I'll add a, a few details here and there, but not all of it for now. The most important thing is just capturing the larger 
objects first, right? So if you get into a situation, especially with line work, you want to always think simplify, simplify, right? How do I simplify this? So for example, we have a grouping of flowers there that looks pretty com complicated and that can be intimidating. We have about, looks like six, uh, one, two, three, four, five, yeah. And there's one right in the middle. If you simplify that, you really just have a circle, right? Um, I mean, it's not a perfect circle. It's kind of like, I mean, you could look at it as a little bit like a square as well, because if you straighten the sides, but it's a pretty easy geometric shape. So what I do is I start from the outside, right? And I just follow along that outside grouping. And I, it's almost like I'm taking that contour line for a walk just around the outside shape of those six flowers that are framing that shape, just like that. And that really enables me to see it better and to see it easier and to define it a lot easier, right? So I'm looking at this shape right here as a grouping. And interestingly enough, I know I'm talking a lot about how we see things and how we observe things. That's actually how you know you get some really good line work in because I, I really feel like if you are seeing it better, you're observing it better, that then it really comes in handy to, to uh, describe it with, with your variety of line. So now we can get into the inside of this and really describe it uh, as much as we want. So the first thing is, here's a little tip is to draw the middle part of it so that you know approximately how large the other objects, the other subjects are gonna be. So in this case, we have this very distinct middle flower right there, right? It's right dead center. So that's gonna give me an idea of how big in relation the other flowers are, right? And that's gonna really simplify things for me. And that's the key, right? So every step along the way, I'm thinking, how do I make this easier for me? How do I make this more enjoyable, right? It's not, so it's not so intimidating. It's not uh, too challenging. And you know, for me, that's the fun thing about drawing is it always feels like a, a kind of a, a, a puzzle or challenge or puzzle to solve every, every time. So every drawing I, I, I make or I get into feels different. It feels like a different challenge, a different puzzle every time. And this one here is kind of tilted to the side. So we'll put that in there. There we go. All right, And we can get into the details of some of the objects here next. I mean, there's isn't really a definitive order that we want to do this. But for this particular drawing, I want to just take it nice and slow because we're just warming up. So, uh, but you could see the difference between this line here and the vases, right? Isn't that interesting? It's an interesting contrast between the two. And most of the time, I never really know. I'm not 100% sure. Sometimes I feel like I'm certain where a drawing is going to go, where it's going to take me. But you know, I got to admit, I love the fact that it's almost always a mystery and a mystery in the sense of you never know what kind of things are going to pop up that are going to change the direction or the composition or any kind of other things, any challenges that might come up that are going to uh, kind of alter your design, your drawing. And that's what I love about it. It's different every single time. So interesting, right? So now you can see the advantage of drawing that grouping first, right? It really just sets up the entire frame. So now we can draw the last vase here. Um, and that's that's okay too, to start in the foreground. Uh, I, sometimes though, if, if you draw the one kind of isolated object, then you tend to kind of, you might push the, the composition a little bit too higher uh, and things kind of fall into, into different areas. So let's draw the front of the bottle. So that way we know approximately how far back it goes. So I'm going to tip 
the angle of the pen right back to where I started, which is the correct way. And I'm just gonna draw the front of the bottle, right? That's about that size. It's about the same size as the, the, the circumference of, of one of these flowers, so I know that. And then I'm gonna draw the neck of the bottle so that way it's easier for me to keep it to keep it uh, kind of equal and keep it to scale. So there's a couple of things you can do if you're not sure how large that bottle is. You're not if you're not that uh, not that certain as far as the shape of it and getting it right. What you can do is create a circle, the neck of it, and just draw that first, just like that. And that'll give you a nice idea of the rest of the bottle and, and its shape. All right, so let's switch here just so I can show you so you guys can see better. The top of it, right? And just nice and easy, nice and smooth, and then draw the base of it. That comes around and then taper it in just like that. Right, and look at that. I mean, it's not exactly uh, the way the way it's composed, but I like this composition. You can make adjustments. You can make this a little bit bigger, right? You can make the bottle and the foreground a little bit bigger. You can add a little bit more weight to it, for example. You, know, you can make it slightly larger if you want. So you can make those adjustments. And then, of course, the other thing is now we can begin to add some detail, right? So, for example, we have some plants that are in the background. So I'm going to turn the, the pen again on its side. I kind of wanted to use the stick. I don't know if, if any of you guys are using the, if you have any kind of found sticks, if you're using that. I think that would be, that, that would be great for this, for this drawing. Yeah, I went out and raided my compost heap just before we started. Yeah. Um, nice. But it was a bit scratchy, so I gave up with it. And that's a good point because if, you know, you you have to kind of discover what works for you in the way that you draw, uh, the way you apply the tool. Um, mm. For example, if you draw... I tend to draw pretty quickly. It's not that I'm in a hurry. I just I tend to have a lot of energy when I draw. And so I tend to move the pen uh, pretty quickly on the board or on the paper. So I, I sometimes will prefer to have a pen that glides easier, that glides quicker and smoother, almost as if I'm drawing on glass. Um, and so I tend to shy away from from papers that have a little bit too much texture, for example, if I know I'm going to be doing a lot of drawing on location, if I'm going to be doing a lot of drawing of people, for example, I'll use a hot press paper that's smoother and um, medium that or tool, a drawing tool that uh, will enable me to be more efficient with that line work. And here I'm just, you can see the advantage is turning the pen just slightly to give us just that little bit of variation that we're looking for. And really it's just about experimentation really, it's just seeing how you can kind of change things and see what happens. Good. Now there's one leaf that comes down here and then comes across. And the more relaxed your hand is, that's another thing that I want to talk about is just the key to, to really having very confident, very elegant line work is just being relaxed. And it really just a state of mind. And it comes either through practice, right? Just lots and lots and lots of drawing and you practice every day when you can 
and you don't have to do a ton of drawing. You can just do one drawing a day, one quick yeah. sketch, just like this. You know, spend a half an hour, an hour, just really, just some quick sketches and uh, just practice. And that will give you a lot of confidence. It'll really just, you know, it'll give, it'll make it second nature when you're drawing. And that's what you want. That's the feeling that you want is just that you're, that you're, uh, it's like breathing, you know, it's, uh, you're very comfortable and you can spend the rest of the time because you're so comforted, you're so comfortable drawing. You can spend the rest of the time observing and studying and, and really paying attention to the subject matter. I find that when I'm drawing on location, for example, I love drawing so much. I feel uh, so calm when I do it. And it uh, really just relaxes me that I can get into conversation conversations while I'm drawing. And that really, you know, it doesn't bother me. It used to when I was learning how to draw, uh, you know, it would be distracting. But now I welcome it because it really puts me in a state of mind and just... And plus, it, I feel like it adds to the drawing, especially if I'm talking to somebody about a location or their history relation, relating to that location. And so I'm just filling in some detail, like I said, and just adding a little bit here and there. And you can see how everything, be, everything because it's, it's all composed in the right sequence as well, uh, it's coming together. And now just adding a little bit of detail uh, is really putting it and making it come alive. And here we have these three leaves. Now, if you want to practice different types of line, you want to enhance your line work, uh, you want to get more confident with your line work, I suggest starting really with still life objects or just everyday objects in your house. You know, just uh, set up a very simple still life like you have here and uh, work on one, you know, one thing at a time. So in this case, you might want to work on just two kinds or three kinds of lines of uh, line variation, thick and thin, for example, is a good place to start. Right, so that way you keep it nice and simple. You don't feel too overwhelmed with uh, with the things that you have in mind. And here you can add some shading to make it even more graphic. And that's what's great about this nib is that it can be pretty bold. And I'm just paying attention to what the drawing is telling me, you know, saying, hey, this looks interesting. This is nice, try this. And that's exactly where I'm gonna go. I'm just letting it dictate, letting the drawing happen and I'm just letting it tell me to do what it wants to do and where it wants to go and I'm just along for the ride, right? There we go. I don't do too much of that, make it heavy handed, but that's that's pretty interesting. And now, last but not least, as we finish up this particular still life, let's add some detail. As we're talking about line work, let's add some interesting texture. Right? That's something we can we can create with line work is texture. Right? And that's just utilizing different types of marks, right? Thick, thin, heavy, light, and the types of the different types of marks that we make, like stipple or dots or gesture or noodling or any kind of different line work that you want to utilize that creates different textures uh, and different uh, different surfaces. This is a little bit dark on the inside, so I'll just add a few. Lines for tone there and then creates that shadow. And then the middle part of the flower is where we can finish up 
this nice still life. That worked out really, really well. I'm glad that we started right in the middle or right up the kind of above that middle area here and found that grouping. We're going to do the same with the other drawings, but we're going to try to use different types of, of line work and different types of marks as well. And we're going to try it with, with some different different tools as well. And you can go as detailed as you want with this. Really just pay attention to what, what your mind is telling you, what your heart's telling you. And for me, I love, I just love how graphic this looks. I'm gonna keep it nice and kind of toned with tone, uh, keeping that tonality uh, nice and simple and con high contrast, All right? So that works for me, that looks really neat. If you want, if you want to kind of plant the still life more, if you want it to kind of be sitting in space, you can add a little bit of shading underneath the objects with a light gray tone. You can kind of pull the color down with a brush. I'll give you an example. I'm not sure if this is going to work because I think I'm using waterproof paint, but I have some water here and I'm just going to take a little bit of the brush. And let's see if it pulls down. Oh, it does. See, there you go. So you can add just a little bit of shading underneath, right? So I have, probably have some, some uh, regular ink in there, which is probably how it mixed together. And just kind of touch the outside of it, and that'll give you a little bit of shading that you want to give you to give it some depth make it interesting right and just like that we are pretty much done with this i mean we can add a little bit more underneath here and just kind of as a touch don't want to pull too much that way we can kind of clean this up if we want with a little bit more water and just pull it away. There we go. All right, so that's pretty cool. I love how this turned out. And then, uh, you know, that's just using this one brush, this uh, kind of cartoon nib, right? It's circular at the end and angled and just using two sides of it. So we have a nice thick, line and thin line is really just very high contrast everything from the line the line choices that we made and the uh, the tone as well all right so that worked out great that was a nice warm-up drawing and uh if you have a little bit of water it, it'll clean the nib when you're done with it i like to bring that with me sometimes to, to just to kind of clean the tip because it does get clogged occasionally uh, uh, with with ink right so now that we're warmed up we're going to get ready to do a little bit do something a little bit more dynamic right and so it's uh, we're going to show a sense of weight and ground in the object and 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 uh, um, you know describe the surface and 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 just really now go after some uh, different types of marks that we can add uh, to show variety with our line work right so let's get into the second drawing which is the stab church or stave church i'm not sure how you pronounce it i think it's stave um but i've always been fascinated with these uh with these with these churches i think they're so beautiful the way they're the the way they're colored and the way they're they're designed the way they're built uh they're just so interesting looking um and as far as i know they they're mostly in um nor uh, Norway or Norwegian culture or Scandinavia. I'm not sure if they're in other parts of Scandinavia, but but this reference is great. I uh, uh, I thought to draw with our different tools. So I'm going to use for this one here. I'm going to use our sticks, right? So I have a plan for our last drawing. 
So I'm going to use a stick. So I'm going to move this aside and let it dry. Up to the side you go. Okay. And just let that dry. And here you have a nice clean surface. And we're going to draw now this stave church, right? I love how this thing is just, it's just so beautiful. And, and, uh, and it's just full of uh, the type of timber. I think it's that's a type of pine that, that grows there. Uh, I believe that they use, and the inside has a lot of different sculptures as well. Um, I wish I could find um, some photos of the interior of these staff churches because they're incredible inside. There's lots of sculptures in them. So I'm going to use a. This is a just a brown. Uh, kind of a umber uh, sienna tone. Um, it, it's a little bit darker than it, it draws a little bit lighter than it looks. So it looks dark here, um, but let's see. It's, so it dries pretty light. It dries a lot lighter than that, but sometimes it could show up as as black if you scan it and and, uh, and uh, increase the contrast. So here, kind of opposite of what we did earlier is we're going to start with the base, right? So we're going to start down here at the bottom, right? And oh, there we go, down here at the bottom, right? Well, that's interesting. There's a little bit of, there's a little bit of residue on the tip of this. And for this particular drawing, right? So let's, I like to do this before I draw something. I like to kind of set in and sit in and get comfortable and just learn a little bit about it and observe it. What kind of drawing I want to do. I love the texture of it. I love the mood of it. And I love how natural it is, how it's built with, you know, with hands, with, with humans built it. And it's very handcrafted and very elegant looking. So I want it to feel very natural and, and just uh, very, very uh, uh, tactile. So I love that I'm going to be using these two sticks I found. And you can use a reed pen or you can use a brush, for example. Uh, but we'll get into that. If you don't have sticks, that's OK. So I have a little bit of, of residue from, from the bottom of this, this stick. So let me raise this up higher so you guys can see that better. That's probably going to help, right? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> All right. And okay, there we go. All right, so I'm just going to compose it with with a little bit of. You can do this with graphite if you want. So let's designate the bottom of it, and the top of it is just right there, right. And that's just really just a straight line down, okay. And that that's right down the middle, right down. If you split, if you take a look at the reference, and you're looking at the top, the three crosses on the top of the church and you just draw a line straight down that's really the direction that's the composition we have here right okay so i'm going to take my brown ink and think bold and think um chunky and uh you know imagine if you're thinking about woodcraft and and building something out of timber right and you're handcrafting it you know it's uh very tactile so it's a lot of different bold marks we're going to be utilizing. So the first thing we're going to do is just going to create a nice heavy line just right across the bottom. And it's okay if it's not perfect. That's kind of what we want, right? Because we're using this, this stick. Um, and I'm just kind of defining the edge, really. I'm just trying to figure out where the bottom of that is. Okay. And that's already an interesting line if you take a look at it, right? Because... It has texture in it already. Look at that, right? It has some bold, it has bold areas and some thin areas. It has a lot of different weight to it, right? And let's draw the outside of it now. Remember, we're going to draw the larger shapes first. So you can start from the top, but I'm going to start from the base here. Let's draw the frame of it, just the outside of it. And I'm just going to use this really thick, kind of bold line with this stick. And then this beautiful kind of arch right in the center that comes across just like that. You guys see that right right in the center. And that gives you that 
that division right there. Okay. Then we have the other side. It's almost like a skirt, right? Just right across the side. And then this comes down and frames it. Okay. All right. Like that. And you can make adjustments if you want. And I love just keeping the drawing nice and relaxed, especially when I'm drawing uh, with ink. I just keeping you know, nice and loose and relaxed. And now we're gonna draw the top of this roof line, just like that. And it kind of connects down at an angle to this side, the interior part of it. And this connects off to the side. Right, so you have a couple options. You can draw the side of it, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to draw the side of it coming up, or you can draw the interior part of it and work your way up. Either way, you're you're in good you're good shape to to get this composition down properly. Okay, so let's. I'm going to start from the outside of it, just working my way up to the first cross right about here. Right. And just keeping your hand nice and relaxed, just like we did in the other drawing, right? Just nice and easy. And just follow that line all the way up, just like that. All right? If you want, you can draw the other side of it, just so you know where you are. Okay? Great. So far, so good. Okay. And now, and since we're there, we can go ahead and add the rest of it, just this side of it here, so we can create some balance in the drawing and draw the rest of the composition, right? So the interesting thing about this is that this roof line comes in at an angle like that and then drops down. And then there's another roof that comes down, just like that. And then this connects down. It's one more roof. <laughs> it's such an interesting shape, isn't it? For a church. I love it. And if you get a little bit lost, here's what I recommend. Just start with one area. For example, I'm not quite sure what's going on here. Let me see. I'm going to create this roof line here and the base of the windows here. And I might even add in the windows just so that I know where I'm at in the drawing, right? And that kind of resets, my eye resets where I am in the drawing and I don't get as lost, right? And I like this area a lot here. I don't want to keep it blank, so I want to make sure I know what's happening. So I'm going to go ahead and fill that in. So we have the front of this tower that's right in the center and that's right in the foreground. That's the most forward here of all of them. That's right there. And then we have, it almost looks like a rocket ship, doesn't it? <laughs> it looks a lot like a rocket ship. I've been watching a lot too many rocket launches. So here we have the outside of the roof, kind of like a skirt, just like that. And Keeping in mind that there's going to be a nice round shape in front of that. And look at how bold this line is. We want that to be really bold, right? Because it creates that shadow. Just like that. And then we connect it. Right? So already we got a nice design going on. And I, and I, I like the feel of this drawing. It's nice and chunky. It's got a lot of character to it. And then, of course, we want we can add this for some detail. Let's keep that out to the side to remind us, right? So now I'm just going to go after some of the bigger, bolder areas of color and line, right? For example, some areas I might want to emphasize with this big stick I have here, this big drawing stick. I'm going to just emphasize some areas with this line work, right? And just have fun. I mean, just really just enjoy 
drawing the different different types of line and creating different textures with the with the tool that you have and uh and i give you permission to uh make a mistake mistakes are our friend believe it or not mistakes you know, i don't really believe in them i think that they're just the characteristic of your hand your drawing hand and and that's just how it is you know if you just accept that it's going to be okay it's not going to be a perfect drawing and you're going to be a lot more comfortable with those with those things that we that we normally consider as mistakes i think they're add a lot of character to your drawing and gives it a sense of character right and we have one more yeah. small small the third one right in the back here just going to keep that nice and tiny so that it gives it better sense of scale and then the crosses of course right across there there we go right looking good and i want to finish off because i, I want to make sure that i give it some some scale on the width of it because i do want to add the side of the church here so let's put that in there just move the composition over and it's about right here right and that's going to give me a nice frame to add that to the base just like that right so it doesn't just feel great it, and, and look at it compared to the other drawing that we did the still life it has a different feeling to it doesn't it and if you want you can do this let's do this let's add some of the pathway that's that comes around the outside of it right let's move this up forward so you guys can see it better there we go some of the path that comes at us in the foreground just like that and then maybe just a little bit of the horizon where we have some trees and some mountains and there's what looks like a little there's some little houses there in the background there's some mountainside and some trees right pathway so that gives it a little bit of background and then here behind the horizon and some mountains as well and some pathways some pathways right so that's giving it's going to give that nice sense of balance all right so just a few more okay. with this with this with this stick because i like this to kind of come forward i'm going to use the side of it to create this really heavy line just like we did on that that first one here on the top and that's going to make it it's going to give it nice sense of weight as well and i'm going to not go too far with this with this kind of bold mark making because I don't want it to be to be too heavy handed and so I'm going to be to be pretty aware of, of how heavy it is and I don't want to go too far with it and that feels good I think I think I like that I can there's a few other areas I would, could add to just give it some contrast but I like how that feels. I don't want to go too heavy. And the other reason is because now we can get into using our handy dandy stick that we found this twig, right? Um, just kind of move the camera higher so you can see more of the composition. There we go. That's looking great. Look at that. Right? I love it when a drawing just exceeds any kind of uh, idea of where it might go. I don't try not to have expectations about anything I do, but sometimes I imagine, I wonder what, where it's something, where a, drawing, where a drawing might go. And I love how, when I'm pleasantly surprised. So now I'm gonna use this stick, right? And this is just really 
it can get away from you. And that's what I love about it. That's the reason why I love drawing with it because, you know, it's never going to be perfect. So accept it's not going to be perfect <laughs> because we are using a stick. So it's going to be imbalanced. It's going to create some pretty uh, topsy-turvy kind of chaotic line. But you know what? That's okay. It's kind of what we want. That's kind of what I'm going for, right? So I'm going to start at the top here. And I'm just going to see what happens, right? If we if we just use a little bit of of it to to draw, I want to zoom in a little bit. If I was there, I'd walk up closer to it and just look at the tiles. And that can be pretty daunting. So I'm just going to start with just a few to create some different marks. And that's going to give me this pattern, right? So we get into pattern work now. And that's another type of line or various uh, type of line that we can add to drawing is pattern along with texture, right? They kind of go hand in hand, but really creating different types of pattern um, kind of relies on the, the different types of, of line that you create, the different types of mark that you create. And that's always good to practice that too, as well. Right, cross hatching and, and uh, gesture drawing. But I love the combination of this, these two types of line that we're making uh, with this drawing. And here we just, you know, we can just go all the way across if we want. And uh, I mean, you could do this entire this entire church, if you want, with this beautiful pattern, I think it'd be really interesting, right? And that could take a while, but you know, it's, I'm just adding what I feel like it needs, it needs for now. So let's, you know, I might add in a little bit of some detail where things are, are framed a little better and some areas that need a little bit more accuracy or a little bit more description. And just to kind of refine things a little bit more. I don't have a backup for this stick, so I hope it doesn't break on me. <laughs> Please don't break on me. Very fragile. <laughs> So far, I've just loved using it because I can turn it whichever way I want and it gets, it creates a different line every time. There we go. And I'm just picking and choosing, picking and choosing what kind of details I want to add. just to refine the subject a little bit more, right? Now, I'm tempted to do this. I didn't think about drawing this, but I love the clouds as well. And I also love how this, this twig is, is drawing, it's applying this ink. I love how nice and loose it is. So you know what? I'm going to take the tip of it like this and just add some of the clouds that I see behind there. I think that would be really interesting. Just for fun. Just kind of putting in the general shape of them. And uh, can't see the entire cloud behind it, but I'm just gonna take my best guess, right? And then there's one right up here in the upper left-hand side. I know it's a vertical composition, and, and the interesting thing is we're and we're making it into a more landscape orientation, and that's really that's the challenge with this drawing. Remember how we talked about it's the different challenge every time with each drawing and that's what we love about it, right? 
There we go. Let me just draw the interior part of the cloud. And I just I just learned is just now if I turn it on its side and use a little bit more ink, look at the texture of of that line it creates because it creates two or three different marks. Isn't that cool? <laughs> look at that. That's really cool. And that's, that's that's the kind of thing I love when I'm using different types of tools and just experimenting with uh, with my pens and seeing what's possible. Look at that. That's pretty neat. It creates a nice texture. In fact, I love that texture so much. I think I might incorporate it in our church because I like how it feels very sculptural. So let's think about where we can add that. I want to add that to the base because it is round and it is pretty dark and most of it's going to be covered. So it's okay to, to add this bit of texture to this. Right? And some parts here in the, in the side are a little bit darker, for example. I won't go too, too heavy with this because I want to make sure to keep the overall shape of the church intact. There we go. That's just enough. I'm going to wipe it off so I don't get the ink everywhere. I'm being careful not to break it. Still good. <laughs> All right. So now, a good pace to finish this drawing. It's looking great. It's got a nice feel to it, too. I love it. Now, I'm not going to spend the entire time drawing every single tile. That's a lot of tiles to draw. <laughs> but maybe we can suggest them by just drawing a few of them, not all of them. Now, I'm going to move up on the stick because it's bouncing a little bit, but I kind of like that. It's not perfect. Because I talk a lot about just accepting what it's doing and being okay with it, not always wanting to change it. So I'm going to go with that. And I like how natural that feels. Uh, I exaggerate the tiles too. I like how it kind of bounces around too. It it sticks and then it, it moves up and it throws a little bit of ink onto the paper. That's pretty cool. Just say that you meant to do that when you when you show the drawing. <laughs> Right. And I'm going to pause here for a second and let you guys kind of take a breath. Any questions so far? I'm just curious, uh, before we get into the next drawing, how it's going for you. If you have any comments or questions at all, I'd be happy to talk about them. Uh, just really, and also maybe if you want to talk about what kind of tool you're using, what kind of ink you're using, anything you want. I've used a mixture of um, some of the uh, twigs that I uh found in the compost heap and a few pens as well um but i found sometimes controlling the flow if you see what i mean it's sort of there's big blotches in places and not in others <laughs> so it was a, a little bit difficult to control the actual flow of the ink at times right uh, but yeah i'm 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 quite i'm quite surprised at the result actually yeah, never, I mean, that's a uh, great. I've never product. done anything so complicated so quickly. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I love to hear. That's the spirit. You know, Stephen, I got to say, thanks for sharing that. And that's a good point. And, and I just, you made me think that a lot of this is giving up that control, that you, you're, you're yeah. so used to being told you need to have this kind of control. It needs to be this way and that way. And it's a lot of it is just kind of, it's it's more challenging to unlearn something, as you know. Uh, sometimes more challenging to unlearn something than to learn something. And a lot of this is unlearning that idea of, of having so much control. It kind of freaks us out. Right. And kind of, gives yeah, yeah. Well, well, to be quite honest with you, if I was doing this 
in my pre you know in my previous incarnation as a as a as a pen and ink artist that would probably take me about a fortnight to uh, to do that paint, to do that drawing same and here type, yeah. type it detailed yeah and and don't get you know i love very detailed drawings i do my share of of very realistic very controlled drawings mm -hmm. Uh, but I also, I think I just get into, I love the spontaneity, the personality. I just love having fun when I draw and, yeah. I, you know, and I just love experimentation too. And I feel like this is uh, for me, my, when I make the most discoveries in, in my art process, in my drawing process and everything I do is just when I just play, mm -hmm. when I play around. So good points. Thank you, Stephen. Okay. All right. So. Uh, well, I don't want to run out of time because we have that beautiful uh, um, the the piazza it's at the Espana uh, the in in Rome to draw. Boy, I'm taking you guys around the world. We're going to Norway, Scandinavia. Now we're going to go to Rome, um, and uh, and that's going to be a treat because I'll show you in a second once I feel feel good about this particular drawing. I just want to add a few touches, kind of pace ourselves so that we have time to tackle that beautiful plaza. We're gonna fly from Norway to Rome. How's that sound? Not yeah, bad. I saw all those people. <laughs> <laughs> you you guys can do it. I know it. I believe, uh, you know what? Remember, let's throw expectation out the window. We are friendly to mistakes, whatever that means, right? We welcome- Embrace embrace the wonkiness yes absolutely you know the wonkiness i love it's like you know that's how your hand works that's how you see things that's how you write things and it's totally normal um i, I will say i used uh on this particular uh one i've been trying to to work with a brush pen and i struggle with it but where well, i'm getting there and um what I had fun with was I used an elegant writer for my clouds and then used my, my water brush to kind of smudge them. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's great. That's a great point. Uh, I love the mixing and matching and, and that's, uh, you know, I feel like that's all I want to do when I, when I paint or when I draw is just trying different, different materials and different tools and kind of mixing them together and, you know, and kind of knowing, well, I don't know if this is a smart idea to, to combine these two, but, you know, what the heck, let's go ahead and try it. And, uh, you know, learning and discovering different things along the way when that happens, you know. I mean, I've made a bunch of discoveries with this drawing, uh, just with these with these sticks. I mean, the, the fact that I turned it on the side, it was able to create that nice texture is great. So I'm just going to add just a few more lines, vertical lines here to give it a little bit more detail, just so we know that it's the front of it and it's not an open, it's not an open gate, for example. Um, I'm gonna edit out that, that uh, looks like that monument right there and right in the front, that little placard in the front. And the interesting thing is you, you made me, you, you guys made me think of the fact that you can, uh, Sharon was mentioning the different mixed media that you can draw this every day um, for a long time and you're just going to have a different drawing every time when you just utilize different types of media and different tools and it's going to be unique every time. You can hear the twig kind of hugging the paper and I love that because it kind of makes it abrasive. I feel like I'm carving into the paper and that is you know it's giving that tactile nature that i really wanted in the drawing and that feels really good I, i'm so happy with the drawing look at that how that came out right i can't wait to see the three different drawings that we're doing today so let's whisk off to rome here we go and uh, i couldn't wait to get to this part and here's why because we're going to utilize everything so far. So we have the bold contrast, very, uh, well, I mean, you could describe it as cartoony or graphic, very design kind of line. We have this very tactile, very loose, very natural line. And we used 
we use a dip pen, we use a reed pen, and we use a couple of different sticks. Let's utilize all of those things. How does that sound for this next drawing? And now that we're really warmed up, I mean, we're, we're ready to go, right? I'm ready to, to hop around and dance around. Usually when I draw a location, I'm dancing in place because I have so much energy, but I'm ready to go. So let's whisk off to Rome and draw this next thing. And I'm just going to keep this off to the side and bring back my black ink. And uh, let's see, we're going to use everything that we've used so far, right? So we've got our dip pen, our sticks, our uh, reed pen. Heck, we even have a brush here we can use if we want. And by the way, a little tip is, I've drawn with these, by the way, the little dipper, you know, the whatever these things are called. Uh, and I've, I've actually drawn with the tip of this because you can collect some ink there. Be careful because it does, obviously, a lot of the ink is collected on there, but just use the tip of it. All right, so let's get into our last drawing here and uh, look at this. And don't, don't be intimidated. Treat this like we're looking at the same still life. We're sitting there, we're having some ice cream. Um, and uh, I'm thinking about oh. Audrey Hepburn and <laughs> Gregory Peck on those stairs. And uh, Okay, and I'm, I'm curious, you're gonna start with the fountain? Or the thing in the thing in front of the fountain or the fountain? I'm gonna, you know, that's a great question. I'm gonna start with the church, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> I, I'm gonna start with the church, and 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 by the way, there isn't a right or correct. I mean, really, if you want to talk about that, because you can start on the left side and justify that because you have this large building shape on the left, right, and that's going to anchor the rest of the composition. You could start right in the center where that fountain is. I'm going to kind of omit that, by the way, that fountain. And okay. that's the other thing is you can edit out objects. You don't have to draw everything that you see there. But you can start there, and that anchors in the rest of it. So it's all about really placement of things and where it's natural for you to see it. And the reason why I'm going to draw that church is because I love what is it about this location? What is it about this subject? that I want to draw. And for me, it's about that height. It's about that perspective and that sense of scale. It's almost like there's five different layers. It's almost like a cake. You have the ground, the street floor, then you have the staircase. Uh, it kind of reminds me of, of, uh, of Paris, really. Um, so, you know, you have the church on top of the hill and you have these staircases that, that kind of wrap around and spiral down. I love that. So I'm going to start with the church right in the top of the hill there. The top of the staircase and that's going to give me the top of the drawing right so i'm going to move this aside for a second right and and just right at the top right it kind of at an angle and just nice and easy and this is going to give me just a shape i'm just going to draw in a shape for example it's a square, right? We have this rectangle right right at the top. Okay. And then we have the sides of it, right? The towers there. So let's put those in. Right. We can make the adjustment if we want. The same thing on the side here. And whatever you're comfortable with, you don't have to draw, you don't have to start where I'm starting. You can start on the side of it if you want. It's really up to you. But what we're going to do here, we're really just concentrating on line. That's the most important thing. And this is going to be off in the distance. I don't want to get too detailed with it. Now we can kind of bring it into shape, right? We can start to refine some of the things that we're seeing. Like we have the arch here. Some circular windows right there. 
so on and so forth. We're just adding on whatever bits of information that we see that we feel is important to describe it. Comes up at an angle there. And there is a staircase, the balcony wraps around the front of it here, just like that kind of wraps around circular kind of oval light. And then there's a bit of a diagonal here. Just like that. And that's going to give you a nice base. Right. And it's really just a square and two rectangular square columns just to, to give it some definition. We have the tree right here for scale. That's going to give us an idea. The building is going to give us an idea how big. Right? And I'm going to just mix and match the different tools. Right? No rhyme and reason. I feel like I want to loosen up the drawing a little bit. So I'm going to use this stick. Right? I'm going to loosen it up a little bit. I love how I was drawing with it earlier. I want to keep that flow of just keeping it nice and loose. And that's going to create some different line variation as well. Right? So I already like what's happening there, you know, using the dip pen with this stick that I'm using. And I'm just drawing the sides of the staircases kind of proportionally to of this church. And I remember how Stephen and Sharon and we were all talking about using different tools, right, for this drawing. Now check this out. I'm going to try the reed pen now. And the reason why is because I want to create this really nice, big, bold shape with it to really case in the outside of the staircase, right? So I'm going to draw that angle. It comes around, comes out, comes down, so on and so forth, right? Look at that. I mean, look at the dimension in that, right? I love it. You move this stick to the side, right? And all of that kind of warm-up drawing we were doing, this is where it leads to when we just get into a rhythm, we get into this kind of flow state where just the drawing just feels like it's just coming alive and it's just automatic right it just makes sense it's we're not we're no longer thinking about what the drawing will it's going to be we have no expectation we're just describing things and drawing things and just having fun right just observing And I just want to keep drawing with this reed pen until, until I feel like moving on to a different tool. Now let's want to case in the the bottom of it. I'm going to use our handy dandy stick. Remember this guy, right? And see if we can get a nice. Yeah, there we go. Look at that line. Yes, that's what I wanted. Let's do that for the top of the staircase. There we go. And I'll slow things down a bit. Just, you know, if I want to describe something a little little more clear, you know, I don't go 100 miles an hour, but I, I will slow it down to make it a little clearer, for example, right? And then we have the side of the staircase here with the there are some columns that people will sit on, kind of a wall that comes down like that. And then I'll go ahead and use the same, the same stick here. We have these buildings that are important that kind of stick out right here. 
and then the side of this building just comes straight down like so and just kind of moves it off in that direction right then we have the side of the staircase here and I kind of jump around in the drawing. It really it gives me an idea where the drawing wants to go, right? It's almost like it has a mind of its own. My hand is just automatic. It's just, now it's just an instrument. It's just along for the ride, really. I'm just letting it, letting my mind, want, letting the drawing, my mind just kind of collaborate and just let the drawing happen and let it do what it wants to do, right? Don't want to get too heavy with this pen because I love how nice and light the drawing feels for now. So I might add just a few of the lamps, for example, that we have. Some get smaller. There's some here in the distance. A few more here. It's a big palm tree. You don't have to include everything. Just just only what you want, only what you feel like including, right? You don't have to include everything. Go. That's what you do. And now I'm gonna move away from this pen or the stick, the stick. It's been drawing so well, I'm calling it a pen, right? Oh, just actually one last thing because I want to add the left side here. Just the left side and just nice thick line just to show the roof line trailing off like that that'll give us some some depth and then the background building that just comes up like that good okay i think the staircase wraps around here so all right so moving the stick around moving the stick away look at that so far so we've established this nice angle, we're looking up at it. It's, you know, the, the whole staircase is coming right down. Now, I love the stick, drawing with the stick. And let's get back to our reed pen. And we don't want to avoid it. Let's go right after the people. Let's go, right? It's going to be all right. A um, couple of things you can do. You can start in the background and draw the grouping of people there first. So, for example, there's... A grouping of people right in the top of the staircase, right? So I'm just going to put that angle in there. Just goes straight down. Same thing on this side here. Just kind of goes, follows this wall, right? And now we can add the people on top, right? And that's going to give us a sense of scale because we have the staircase. Let's see, this person has a thick coat on. And this couple, they're taking pictures together. He's got his arm around her, right? He's got a nice pose going. And I don't skip the detail with this. I, I try to keep the, the drawing bestial the line nice and nice and easy and uh, and just kind of free flowing, but I also take my time to describe things. It's almost like I'm I'm drawing in a hurry, but I'm not. I'm really just drawing more efficiently because I'm taking my time to draw just the right ingredients, the right subjects, if you will, the right things that I'm editing within the drawing. Let's draw the rest of the church here, at least the front of it. And can you believe it? We're almost at the end of the class can't believe it it felt like 10 minutes it literally felt like a few minutes and uh, that usually happens you know that happens when uh, we're just 
into it. We're just into the drawing. We're into our work and I'm into our play, really, because it just feels like I'm just playing now and just, just making all these discoveries right now with you guys. So thank you for joining me because it's been a pleasure. And uh, if, if y'all, if you guys want to share uh, before we end the class, uh, just, you know, if anything you want to comment on, anything that you discovered with your materials, uh, any challenges you may have had, uh, any feedback you, you'd like uh, from us. So uh, just, you know, don't be shy and just uh, and just uh, raise your hand or chime in and I'll be happy to talk talk about it. I'm just going to keep drawing and I want to show you where this drawing goes. It's, it's nice that we're using all the different tools that we've had uh, that, we, that we've used so far. The only one I haven't used is this brush. So I'm going to show you what I can do with that. Remember this, this wash that we had, right? I'm going to use that to create, you know what? I'm going to use this one here. That, that brush is dry. So the tip of this, the this brush tip from the reed pen, I'm going to use that to create a nice kind of tone in the drawing to give it a little bit of shadow. Right? That's going to look really nice in the drawing just in some areas, just to give it some depth, right? And that's looking great. Just drop it down on the side there, right? And move that aside. And I'm just gonna keep going with those people. We got a nice grouping of people right in the center here, right? That, that one's taking a picture right in the center of his friend. I think I'd probably be sitting, I don't know if you're allowed to sit on the staircase. I think I see a few people sitting on the staircase. I would be there with my gelato, just drawing as much as I could. And then we have just the staircase line, just a few, just to kind of suggest them. And then this side too is important. Whoops, <laughs> go right through the paper. <laughs> it's still wet. That's okay. You know what's funny? It looks like ink. <laughs> there you go. And there's somebody there. Not a lot of people there, but let's draw for the foreground to kind of wrap it up. Uh, I think this is important to wrap to to give it a sense of scale. We have these people in the foreground. So let's add them. I think that's important, right? So we have this woman here, she's posing. She's got her bag, her hands right there, and she's got a skirt. And then her friend is taking her picture. And that's going to give us a sense of scale, really, for the drawing, right? And then we have we actually have a couple here hugging. So let's let's put them in there. That'd be great to add. I think that's important. That's really sweet. There we go. She's got her arm there, and then her back is curved, and her legs down. And we have some people right here in the foreground that's really going to make it come alive and really bring it together to give us a sense of scale. Okay. And you can just kind of pick and choose what you want to add as you go along, because 
really just the drawing starts to make sense and uh, it starts to make sense some of the choices that we were making along the way, why we chose what we chose to draw and uh, starts to come alive really, right? So let's add a few more people here on the left side to kind of balance it out and give it more scale as well. Someone sitting right there. I gotta go, thank you, Jed. Thank you, Sharon, for joining us. See you next time. All righty. All right, we have this couple here. Kind of standing up. And I hope that you're just, you know, keeping it fun and keeping it nice and loose. And like I said, don't worry about it being accurate. Just draw. Just work on your line. Just practice your line work. That's the most important thing is that we're discovering something about what kind of different lines we can create, the different types of marks and different textures and different patterns, all kinds of things that we can learn by just focusing on uh, one practice, right? And that's the key really is, is I want you guys to just practice on, practice one thing at a time. If you get overwhelmed, work on one, one exercise uh, at a time. That way you really start to develop those different techniques, right? Of just a little bit at a time. Thank you so much for this class and for joining. Thank you, Jed. It was great. Yeah, th yeah, thank you. Right. And I just, just for a closing thought, I want to say, remember that, you know, it's great drawings are, are awesome, but, you know, with learning, with learning anything and discovering anything, it's not about a great drawing. It's about what we learned in the process. And we learned so much today. We could apply that we going did. forward, Definitely. right? There's so many interesting things we can build on and carry that momentum forward. I can't wait for you guys to apply that. Keep drawing, keep having fun, and I'll see you guys next time.